In this video, I'm going to talk about printing for a wedding stationery business. It's so important to get this right when you're first starting out so you don't have costly mistakes, errors, or even just bad product. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to start, run, and grow successful creative businesses. I have a whole membership for stationary designers if you want to check it out in the description of this video called Stationary School, where we come out with new lessons from me and guest educators every single month. All right, so you're starting a wedding invitation design business and you're not sure where to go with printing. I think a lot of people are drawn to printing in-house because they think it's cheaper because you look at those costs of a print shop and you think, oh, like 50 cents for a card. I can print it for like three cents of ink here. I just want to discourage you from assuming that that's necessarily true. Um, I have another video where you can see kind of a in-house printing pricing exercise and how that's not necessarily true. When you start taking into account the time of your labor, which gets more and more valuable, the busier you are and the more clients you have, um, the cost of paper, the cost of extras that you have to order, the cost of cutting things down, um, any time that you spend on printer adjustments and things like that, um, it's not necessarily cheaper. That's not to say that you can't print in-house. I have two printers in-house that I absolutely love. One is a Canon Inkjet. Um, it's a Canon Pixma Pro 100. And then one is a laser printer, which is an HP M452 DW. And I use this also for white printing. Um, I have a whole blog post on that that I'll link below, kind of reviewing that whole printer for you. Both of these printers are great, but I still try to outsource at least 90% of my printing. I try not to print in-house as much as possible because frankly, I like to focus on being a designer, not a print specialist. And I like to hire people who are print specialists to do that. Um, this works for me. It's not necessarily how everything's gonna work for you. And it's up to you to decide what the best options are. But I'm gonna go over my toolkit of the best printers to have in your belt because I like to think of printers and print shops as tools that you're using in your business. They're not necessarily um, the whole of how you're doing your business, but the way that you use them will change how effective you are at building the stationery or, you know, just like a hammer is going to help you build a table. The printers are going to help you build that final stationery suite for your clients. I'm going to read this off because I made a list, but your main toolkit, ultimate toolkit of printers will include a local printer, a main standard printer. This could be the local printer or could be someone else, an in-house inkjet, an in-house laser, a letterpress printer, a foil printer, which also those two could, could be the same person. Um, a white ink printer could also potentially be any of the above. A backup main printer and then optional kind of specialty printers of all sorts for like engraving, thermography, any other print methods that you might want to offer, die cutting, etc. Okay, so let's go through this a little bit. Your local printer is going to be great for emergencies or if you just want to go physically and like see what they're doing, see how they're working on things. I found a local printer to be really helpful when I was starting because they could help me learn about file production and printing guidelines. You're going to want to look for someone who does wedding invitations often so that they have the specialty papers in stock and they understand the type of quality you're looking for on smaller, more luxury runs, as opposed to a printer that just does like 5,000 flyer runs at a time. Okay, your main printer should kind of be who you funnel most of your work to and they should have a decent range of capabilities. They should be able to handle pretty much any printing that goes with your standard job. For me, this is Princewell Fulfillment. Um, you could try them. You could try Stationery HQ. Um, Mingo Press is another one that has a lot of capabilities. So all of these printers, I could do any standard job. If you want to try out Princewell, check out a bunch of other videos on my channel and I, you can get $25 off your first order if you use the link in the description. Uh, but they can do pretty much anything on white paper. They have some colored envelopes. I could order an entire order just through them. They also have some white ink capabilities, some die cutting capabilities, foiling, just fun things that you'll see um, in the other videos. The reason to have a good kind of main printer who can do everything is that you know how your work is gonna print on their papers and on their machines. You know how their file setup is, you know how their shipping policies are, you understand their pricing, etc. Having something kind of standardized is just gonna save you a lot of time and energy in the long run. I talked a little bit about my inkjet and my laser that are in-house. The main reason for this is that certain papers can only be printed on one or the other. For instance, handmade paper is not supposed to be printed on a laser printer. It's supposed to be printed on an inkjet printer. Um, I also find with vellum that different types of vellum can print well on either the inkjet 
or the laser. So I just like to have them both for different capabilities. My inkjet will also print thicker paper than my laser, but my laser is a lot faster and has somewhat crisper images than my inkjet. I have a whole other video comparing them if you want to check that out. And now we're talking about letterpress and foil printing. These are the most common specialty print methods that we use in the wedding invitation world. So finding a good one uh, can be really helpful. I find that a lot of people who do letterpress and foil printing are more smaller shops and you're going to not have like an online ordering system, but you will need to kind of email them, talk to them directly. I would recommend finding some local so that you have quick shipping and you can work with them. And typically if you talk to other stationers in your area, or you can ask in our free Facebook a group stationary squad, um, people will have recommendations for you. Waiting printing is also really popular and you'll probably get requests for it. You can always just say like, this is something we don't offer as you can do with any of the other specialty processes we're listing here. But I think white ink, white ink is one that we all kind of have to bite the bullet and offer at some point. I do a little bit of it in-house like for white ink addressing on my HP, um, but you can also do this like Princewell has some capabilities, Stationery HQ and Mingo Press all have some white ink capabilities. So all three of those that I mentioned that have a ton of capabilities and could be your main printer um, also can handle all of the white ink as well. But you'll want to get familiar with what they offer. For instance, Princewell offers white ink addressing on their colored envelopes, but they don't offer any printing on colored stocks. So you can't do like a black card with white ink, but you could do black envelopes with white ink addressing. Next, you want to have a backup main printer just in case something's wrong. Yours is out of stock. Yours is closed for some reason. There's something going on. You just want to have someone else to offer. Um, of those three that I mentioned, any of those would be great standard. They would also be great as backup for the others. And then you can have optional printers um, of all sorts. I would recommend just kind of asking in some Facebook groups or things when you're in need of these uh, because there's just not that many people that offer things like engraving, um, die cutting, thermography, all of those things again. So if you ask some other stationers, you will be able to find that information. I also have a print and paper vendor guide that I'll link that has over a hundred curated uh, printers, paper suppliers, ribbon suppliers, acrylic suppliers, just every type of supply that you could possibly need for a wedding invitation business uh, that I'll link in the description for you that has so many recommendations there. But in the interest of not overwhelming you, I will recommend just kind of checking out some of those that I mentioned. Um, Prince Wealth Fulfillment, Stationery HQ, and Mingo Press are really, really great starter printers for any stationery designer. And if I'm evidence of this, can carry you <laughs> even further. They're not just just starter resources that you're going to move on from because they have such a good variety of capabilities and you can really structure your entire offerings around a printer like that. If you do decide to print in-house, I hope you'll check out getting a laser printer and an inkjet printer because I think that combination is going to give you more of the capabilities that you're used to. And just know that you're going to have to spend some time learning the capabilities of these machines and how they work and the nuances of them because of course they have nuances. This is why printing is an entire job in and of itself because it's not as easy as just clicking print and letting it run. I hope this was somewhat helpful in getting you started in the world of printing. It's all about trial and error with stationary printers. Um, some of the ones that I've recommended you might hate and some of the ones that you love I might hate working with for many, many reasons. So just try some things out, run some test prints. Um, all three of the ones that I mentioned today, Stationery HQ, Prince of Fulfillment, and Mingo Press are all gonna let you do smaller runs, which is really nice because some printers do have minimum orders. Uh, so I recommend running some samples on them. First of all, you get practice in setting up your prints uh, for production. Second of all, you'll get some samples to take pictures of for your portfolio. And third of all, you'll get used to working with these printers and what you like and don't like about them. Let me know what other questions you have about printing with stationary businesses. And I hope you'll consider joining our membership stationary school where we talk about all things stationary every single month. While you're here, like, subscribe, and watch some of our other videos all about stationary design. Thanks everybody.